Hello everyone, this is Dr. Farooq from ER Skill Lab. Today, I'll tell you a story that I managed today that ended up having a modified rapid sequence intubation or RSI. So it was just about half an hour before I finished my shift, uh, there was a pre-alert, um, a, a patient came into a and &E recess. This was a 47 year old female with a history of a uh, week of headaches, but then it got severe this morning, patient uh, that had gradual decline of his heart consciousness. And by the time I assessed the patient uh, and, and took the handover from the paramedics, it was uh, about six or seven GCS. So first of all, yes, and I was, all of us were thinking yeah, that could be intracerebral bleed or subrepinate hemorrhage. That's one thing. The other thing is this patient was desaturating on 50 liter of oxygen. So it was like 80, 88% of um, uh, saturation on 50 liter of oxygen. She wasn't managing her airway enough. So it, the immediate thought that, that was the key for any doctor to make the decision what the patient needs. Well, this patient obviously need a CT head to confirm your diagnosis, but before you send the patient to CT scanner, that this patient needs intubation, right? And that decision, once you make the decision, I made the decision at that moment that this patient, yes, uh, will need a um, intubation before she goes to the CT scan. So immediately I asked someone to call the emergency number, to call the on-call and anesthetist to come and help me. And also someone to book in a CT head. Well, the other person I asked to uh, do the observation, VBG, bloods and ECG tracing. However, I, I went to the head end to take the airway uh, control. So since she wasn't uh, maintaining her airway, I give her, she was making some gurgling noise. I, I would get some suction, uh, get some secretion out of her mouth. She was still having some uh, upper air obstruction. I, I, I did some chin lift and jaw thrust maneuver. That was a bit of helpful, but didn't help much. Then uh, I ended up putting a nasopharyngeal airway. So there was, I tried one side, didn't work. I went to the other side. So yes, there was a bit of help. Then I tried to put a Giddell in, which I, the mouth was very stiff. I couldn't open the mouth, so I couldn't put the Giddell in. Obviously, by the time I was really, really bit, become like, becoming worried, a little bit worried that she might decline very soon. Anyway, um, then, um, by the time their helps are coming in. So I asked someone to prepare for RSI drugs. So for RSI drugs, mainly uh, it's a modified RSI. So I asked someone to prepare uh, fentanyl, propofol, and rocrinum, and also some emergency drugs like uh, atropine, glycoperolate, uh, or metrominal ephedrine, okay? And also set up an infusion pump that will be needed during the transfer. So someone's doing that. The other person I asked to set up the ventilator, the, the circle system, and also uh, a water sucker so that I can give some heat. So anyway, by the time those are getting ready, I was in the head end, lifting the jaw, giving the jaw thrust, uh, giving her, give her some peep with water circuit, and the rest are being done. By the time the anesthetic consultant came down to help me, he's going to go for doing the sedation, part while I can do the intubation. Someone is asked to do the pricot pressure as well. So after all the equipments, uh, um, uh, all the drugs and equipments are ready, obviously in terms of equipments, we need to see uh, if you have a difficult airway trolley ready, which has plan A, B, C, and D. And in terms of equipment, since it is, an, it is a suspecting it could be a difficult intubation suspecting. So we had a video laryngoscope like CMAC uh, with different size of blades ready, like size three, four, and D blade and each tube is ready, eye gels are ready. So all the air equipment is ready, the ventilator is ready, the infusion pump and all the drugs are ready. In that meantime, I was pre-oxygenating the patient at least um, three, three to five minutes by the time they get ready. And then when everything is settled, then I asked uh, our anesthetic colleagues to um, give the uh, drugs. So 
think he gave uh, 100 of 100 mics of fentanyl, 50 of propofol, and 50 of rock. So then we waited for about two minutes. It'll relax, and then I went in, looked into, uh, put the C CMAC in. I could see the epiglottis and belly club, lifted up, and I saw the. Uh, it was a grade one view of blaring scope. So I just put gently push the tube in. Uh, okay, connected to the uh, you know ETCO2 monitoring. Uh, and, and confirm the ventilation, obviously. You will see the chest rise and fall, okay, the ET tube misting, and um, you see the vocal cord, the tube is going in on the, on the monitor and the CO2 tracing coming in. So once you confirm the tube, we tie the tube, inflate and tie the tube, get the, uh, uh, take the cooker pressure off, and then, then uh, instead of circle system, we disconnect and connect the ET tube with the ventilator, uh, probably uh, in mandatory ventilation mode, one of the mandatory ment ventilation modes there. And by the time, yes, uh, we are sort of ready uh, in terms of intuition point of view, the ops looking fine, patient is settled down. And uh, I, I have someone who can transfer the patient to CT scan and then back to HTU. So I2 team is, was already there. So we, during the transfer, you always remember that you need a portable cylinder. You need to take the monitor and you need to take the syringe pump with you. Also take the emergency drugs like uh, adrenaline, atropine, metraminol, uh, put IV free drip in there. So once everything is settled, you call a porter to take the trolley to the CT scan. And also by the time someone already booked in the CT head and maybe chest X-ray, and then after that, I think the IT consultant was happy to take the patient to, uh, to uh, an HD bed afterwards. So yeah, the, the whole story, there's all, all these um, steps I've been doing, the three key things for you to remember. One is to make the decision and any doctor, you need to make the decision very quick that yes, this patient is collapsing and this patient can go anywhere else uh, even for a, a radiology department without intubation. So making the decision is very important. Second, ask for help. So what, the moment you make the decision, you call the emergency number in your hospital. In our hospital is 2222. We call the on-call anesthetist and the IT team. So they come in down by the time we get ready. So decision, like get the team ready. Third is the drugs and equipments, okay? You make sure you have the drugs and equipments ready. In terms of drugs, you have the intubating drugs like analgesic, sedation, and muscle reflux, and also emergency drugs like uh, metraminol, uh, atropine, and ephedrine, okay? Uh, also, you also have adrenaline just in case. And in terms of transfer, you need a post-intubation sedation, you need a propofol infusion, which we had ready by before we intubate the patient. So decision, team ready, drugs ready, and also try to make sure you have an intubation checklist. Everything, there should be a checklist, like a tick box that, that needs to be done throughout the process. So if you don't have intubation checklist, try to make one, have your team organized, have a uh, collaboration between ITU and anesthesia uh, in terms of making the checklist and in terms of steps, what is being done, what is going to be done in AE. Sometimes, if you uh, have more time and resource, you can do a central line and art line uh, before you transfer the patient to the CT scan or ITU. All right. So that's the story, guys. And I would suggest to read more around it. Remember, I told you, once you intubate the patient, don't forget to start a propofol infusion or something in terms of sedation. You need to sedate the patient and maintain the sedation throughout the process before you decide on um, extubation later on in ITU. So maintaining a sedation before the transfer is very important. Asking for help early on is very important. And also having a plan within your hospital or trust um, is very important. An intermediate collaboration, having an intubation checklist is really, really important. 
if you missing any of these, if you have any question, do read a lot, watch YouTube videos and also ask me any question if you have. Um, thank you so much. The, the other thing I would discuss later on is the details on drugs, RSIs and modified RSI procedures. All right. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something from my case today. Thank you so much. We will see you soon.